Overwatch is a game all about little mistakes that add up to your inevitable defeat or victory. If you make less mistakes than your opponents, then you're going to start winning consistently. That being said, there's actually tons of really simple mistakes that many of you might not even think about that are costing you tons of SR. So in this video, we're going to be going over the top 10 simple mistakes that are probably costing you tons of games. We got no time to waste, so let's just jump right into it, shall we? Now, kicking off with tip number one, a mistake that every player has made at some point, I've even made it myself, and it's calling an enemy one HP when they're really not 1 HP. Now I know that the term 1 HP is a conjunction for just calling a player low, but the idea behind 1 HP is that if any single character will put a tiny bit of effort into focusing that target, that target will get burst down. The problem arises when players will put in only a tiny chunk of damage and call an enemy 1 HP. The enemy could be at 100 or 150 health. This is not 1 HP, it's not even 1 hit. And if you allow one of your teammates to overextend to try to confirm a kill that is not actually weakened enough to make that process worth it you could actually be responsible for your allies feeding all together just by making one singular bad call now moving on to another really simple tip that could be costing you sr is saying help me or heal me without calling your character's name in third person now it's really complex in a team fight when everyone's calling they're saying hey let's push in hey come help me hey come kill this person whatever but the problem i'll see most often is something like a mccree will be getting pressured and he'll say heal me heal me heal me and the ana in a split second has to look up at the right screen identify who is saying that and maybe multiple people are talking at the same time so it's really hard to identify who's actually talking then even after she figures it out then she has to look around the battlefield and find exactly where you are if you're on a flank or if you're in a weird position it's gonna be hard for her to get to you and then she has to actually heal you fast enough and most of the time if you were saying help me heal me it's too late and so the best thing that you possibly could do when trying to make calls every single time is call yourself in third person nano genji help heal mccree help Anna's getting dough talk about yourself in the third person it can really help your team give you the resources that you need and it can help you get the peel that you want so badly if you don't do this it's probably gonna get you killed more than once in a game which can cost you wins and sr it's a really simple mistake but if you don't fix it now it can cost you sr now moving on to tip number three not running to stop the cart when the fight is lost two fights versus three fights so let me really break this down it's pretty simple to understand once i explain it but you definitely need to understand this concept let's say we're talking about eichenwald second where the car is moving all the way around before it gets to the third point now what can happen a lot of times is teams will take an early fight right after the enemy has capped but they will start to lose the fight and instead of all of you pushing onto the car and dying on the car preventing it from moving instead they will pull back when they know that they have no way to get out and they'll end up dying extremely late the whole time the enemy is pushing the cart for free and your team is going to have to wait for you to completely respawn before they actually get to fight as a six player fight a full team fight so what you should be trying to be doing if you know you can't get out and the team fight is already lost you should be aggressively pushing to the car and i mean aggressively you're not trying to dodge you're not trying to juke people out you're not trying to you know move away from the car go behind natural cover come back to the car you are pushing in through the enemy onto the car this will ensure that the enemy have to kill you because they want the cart to move they can't stagger you they can't kill you late you can't inadvertently stagger yourself if you push yourself you walk straight at the cart with an intent to touch the cart or die and if you die that's fine and if you touch the cart and stop it that's fine too because they're not getting progress and then once you get reset then the cart moves and then you can ensure more team fights overall and this is so important because i can't tell you what has happened a lot of games is something like your team will get one fight but you and your team will stagger all the way through and then the last fight is not a full 6v6 some of you are going out of spawn so it's a 4v6 and then y'all just lose that for free this happens on king's row this happens on eichenwald this happens on afana i've seen it so many different times and it really comes down to the fact that players don't understand that you need to die on the cart and not stagger this goes to the staggering concept that i'll talk about in a little bit but it's so important so just get this right each and every time it's guaranteed to get you more wins and it's a simple mistake that can definitely cost you a lot of sr now moving on to tip number four a simple mistake that a lot of players make is holding on to an ult instead of swapping when you know you should i see this so often where a player is playing a character that's getting completely countered they identify that it's getting countered but they want to get their ultimate 
I've had players have a 50% ultimate and they say, I'm getting really hard countered, but I almost have ult, so I might as well stay. Then they go into another fight, they build up their ult, but they lose because they're playing a really bad character. And then they have their ultimate, so they go in another fight. Maybe they don't even get value out of their ultimate, so they lose anyways. And then they lose the whole game because they were so stubborn. They wanted to get value out of this ultimate so bad. The thing is, if you understand that you're not getting any value, you understand that your pick is bad, you understand that the effective playstyle, the average playstyle of your character is not enough to stop the enemy. Maybe you have no hit scan for a far. Maybe the enemy Doomfist is diving and you need a peeler. It's almost always better to swap to the character that you know you can get value out of rather than trying to get value out of your ultimate because it's too risky. You're putting all your eggs in one basket. Most ultimates aren't even worth it. And on top of that, you could be building ultimates for the character you're swapping to, which you're not gonna be doing if you don't switch to them sooner. So whether you have 50, 60, 70% ultimate, if you are getting effectively shut out, just swap off, take the ultimate tank, but at least it's better than building all the way up to 100% using your ultimate and still not having impact and then having to swap off. That could be one, two minutes off the clock, or it could be just a completely lost game now real quickly if you want to start winning more games you definitely need to go check out gameleap.com i'm gonna keep it short and sweet we're the best educational platform online so definitely come check us out you won't regret it now moving on to tip number five this is getting mad at x player without knowing their pov this is a super simple mistake that i'll see all the time where a player will die to a farah they'll press tab they'll look and see a hit scan and they'll start complaining to that hit scan they'll start yelling at that hit scan getting mad at a player they don't even know what that player went through they don't even know what happened to that player maybe that mccree got by three people maybe he never got peel or pocket maybe it was an unfair matchup if you're gonna just get mad without understanding the context then you're just tilting your team you're tilting yourself and you're not helping to actually solve the problems or win the game it's a mistake that i see way too many people do and it's completely unnecessary in the game of overwatch if your goal is to win then stop doing this now, moving on to tip number six, this is getting tilted at your team over what they play for no reason. Yesterday, I played on my 3.9k alt account where I predominantly play Genji just to experiment and practice. And the second I picked Genji and walked out of spawn, I instantly started getting flamed. He was playing Zarya and he kept on telling me to swap that Genji's useless. This is before we even touched the enemy. This is before we even saw the enemy. He was already mad at me just because he thought that just a pick alone is enough to get mad, get tilted, start flaming me start throwing the game and i know for a fact if it could happen all the way up near gm it could definitely happen at each and every rank don't get mad over what other players play and if you have someone in your game that starts roasting somebody based on what they play before they even have entered the game right at the select screen Try to alleviate that situation. Try to de-escalate. Here's the thing that you need to understand. You can win a game with any character. Think about the worst team composition that you possibly could think of. That team composition could roll the de facto best meta comp easily at almost any rank if players play it better. Don't take this mindset into your games because it does nothing but spread negativity and promotes you losing games because you tilt the team. Now, moving on to tip number seven, this is giving inadequate calls or cluttering with nonsense. This is a big calm tip, and this goes back to saying, help me, heal me, without talking about yourself in third person. People will say this all the time. They'll say, push in with me, or they'll say things like, he's low, kill him, and no one knows who you're talking about. No one can see from your point of view. Calm should be precise, they should be accurate, and you should help your team learn as much information as possible. If you're pulling as Arissa, why not say, pulling above the enemy Rhine, pulling McCree, pulling this character, pulling that character. Don't just say pulling in the abstract. Don't just say, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Help me kill this person. You really need to try to be more precise. Don't clutter comms with nonsense and don't give inadequate calls if you're giving calls at all. Try to give more information and try to keep it bite-sized so your teams can understand. Now, moving on to tip number eight, this is a big one that I see a lot at low ranks is just not pushing when your team has advantage. When you have a pick, when you have ultimates, when you have kills, push up. If you're a tank, push up and take the space. If you're a DPS or a support, push up with your tank. Everyone needs to be pushing when you have advantage. I see far too many times where a team will get a couple of kills and they'll just stand there and wait. It gives the enemy opportunity to regroup, potentially get a pick themselves, back up, give a couple ticks, retake the fight. You want to put the pressure on. If you develop an advantage with a pick, your space you take and the pressure you put on the enemy should match the 
picks that you get as well. The more picks you get, the more pressure and the more space you could take. Don't be afraid to push in when you have advantage. It's a really simple tip, but I see this, especially at low ranks, when I do VOD reviews over and over again. People just are way too passive when they have advantage. Now moving on to tip number nine. This is a huge one for every single player I've seen at every single rank. And this is believing you've already won when you might not have won. How many times have you and your team thought that you won because you think, oh, the team can't touch. The team can't touch. We could just mess around. We could waste our ult. We can grab the wall. We could do this. We could do that. We could walk off the point. But guess what? The enemy Lucio is a god tier wall rider and he touches the point. He has beat. His Hammond follows suit. He mines the point. They both get beat. The Reaper comes back. They death blossom your team and you lost. You could have killed that Lucio before he got to point if you were thinking about it. You could have prepared you and your team to better fight a team fight if the enemy can touch. There are tons of things you could do besides wasting all your abilities, resources, being in bad positioning and thinking you already won the game when you have in fact not won the game. You have not won the game until that victory appears on your screen. So make a game plan for the enemy even if they can't touch make a game plan as if they can always and then you can completely drop it you can get that relief that sweet sweet victory once you actually get it on your screen but before that take the game seriously don't waste abilities and ultimates and consider every possibility now before we move on to tip number 10 if you want to win the next five games in a row smash that like button i guarantee you it will give you the best luck and you'll just win the next five games easy it's really that simple that's the best tip i can give you in the whole video now actually moving on to tip number 10 a really big mistake that i see and a mistake that i've personally dealt with in the past as well is being too hard on yourself or others now at the end of the day everyone wants to win the game but if you're being so hard on yourself that you're getting mad at yourself you're feeling that anxiety you're feeling that anger that depression if you're getting mad at other people to the point where you're acting out being emotional shit talking them when that's not even your de facto personality but you can't help yourself you really need to take a step back take a breather go relax go wash your face at the end of the day it is a game we play this game for competition for that competitive nature in all of us but it is a game and it is for fun and if you allow these things to dig too deep into your psyche you're gonna end up hurting your progress it's really gonna start costing you sr i can't tell you how many people that i've seen that have dropped all the way from gm all the way down to diamond and they are in a self-fulfilling prophecy of them feeling like they're better than everyone around them so they flame everyone around them and they themselves aren't even playing well because of rust and a mixture of frustration and anxiety and it just becomes a clump of them just being the most toxic type of people and if they just took a step back started to enjoy the game more treat it like it's a game it is a game they would start climbing more and it's a really simple mistake to allow yourself to fall into that pit but i've seen it way too often and i want to make sure that no one falls into that pit like i have in the past it was really hard to dig myself out of that mentality now there's only one place that you'll find in-depth psychology guides about overwatch that will get you in the proper mindset to perform each and every game gameleap.com has an insanely stacked psychology section and we have in-depth tips and tricks that can help you level up your game instantly do yourself a favor and come check us out. You won't regret it. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I would love to respond and give you feedback about anything that you may ask. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time, 